So I was browsing around BaseballReference.com recently, and I came across something very strange. I was looking through a very specific stat head search, in which I pulled up every player in the live ball era with at least 8,000 plate appearances, ranked by total career war. I do this kind of thing in my spare time because I'm a huge nerd. So it turns out that in the live ball era, 242 players have reached 8,000 plate appearances. And to my surprise, among those 242 players, Michael Young's 24.7 career war ranks 228th, or the bottom 6% of this list. How could this be, I thought. Michael Young was a great player for a long time. How could he not even have 25 career war? And then I was even more shocked when I went to Michael Young's page and saw that he carries, for his career, a negative 48 runs above average, a negative 10.5 defensive war, and a negative 4.6 wins above average. Okay, what's going on here? Why do the advanced numbers hate Michael Young so much? Was he one of the most overrated players of his generation? Or is there some other explanation? If you've enjoyed any of my videos, please do me a huge favor and hit the like and subscribe buttons. It helps me out a lot. Anyone who remembers Michael Young almost certainly remembers him as one of the best and most consistent hitters of his era, a perennial all-star in his prime, and one of the cornerstone pieces of a great Texas Rangers squad that made it to two World Series late in his career. The kind of player who wasn't quite good enough to make the Hall of Fame, but good enough to get on the ballot and at least receive a look from the voters, receiving 2.1% of the vote in 2019. Let's start off by discussing Michael Young's achievements of which there are many. Young was the very definition of a 300 hitter, finishing with an exact 300 batting average after 14 seasons in the big leagues. He hit over 300 seven times and even won the American League batting title in 2005 with a 331 average. He collected over 200 hits in six different seasons, which is more impressive than you might think. It's something that only 18 players in all of history have accomplished. He led the American League in hits both in 2005 and 2011. He drove in more than 90 runs in six different seasons, which is run production you would definitely take, especially from a guy who played over 1,200 games as a middle infielder. He won a gold glove as a shortstop in 2008. He received MVP votes in five different seasons, finishing as high as eighth in MVP voting both in 2004 and 2011. So you could say he was about a top 10 guy in the American League in his prime. He was a fan favorite, making the All-Star team seven times between 2004 and 2011. And I would say his prime was probably an eight-year stretch from 04 to 11. In this eight-year stretch, Young averaged 201 hits, 39 doubles, 17 homers, 92 RBI, and 50 walks, with a 312 batting average, an 823 OPS, and a 113 OPS plus. So when you look at all these numbers and achievements, or in other words, when you look at the traditional stats, you easily come to the conclusion that Michael Young was one of the most steady, reliable players of his generation. So this brings us back to the question, why do the modern analytics hate on Michael Young so much? Many of the sabermetric numbers suggest that Michael Young was more or less an average player or maybe even a below average player at times, who just so happened to stay very healthy and play a lot of games, which allowed him to accumulate a lot of numbers. So let's look at some of the advanced metrics, starting with his hitting at the plate. Young posted a career OPS plus of 104, a respectable number over the course of 14 seasons, but just a few ticks above average. The same goes for his WRC plus, also sitting at 104. When you look at the different metrics used to measure runs above replacement, both on baseball reference and on fan graphs, it looks like Young was somewhere between 250 to 300 runs better than a replacement level hitter. But when you look at the metrics used to compare Young not to a replacement level hitter, but an average major league hitter, the numbers aren't so kind. His runs above average are plus 63 on baseball reference and plus 45 on fan graphs. These are nice numbers, but nothing crazy impressive. It puts him closer to Todd Zeal than it does to Ian Kinsler. And his runs above average on baseball reference measures Young at a negative 48 runs. 
So when you put all these numbers together, it paints the picture that Michael Young was certainly much better than a replacement level hitter. He's someone you'd want to have on your team as opposed to your next best option in AAA, but over the course of his entire career, he was more or less an average MLB hitter. So why is this? I believe it's mostly due to his lack of walks and his lack of home run power. Young averaged only 47 walks per 162 games for his career, and his career high was only 58 walks in 2005. So even though he was a career 300 hitter, his on-base percentage only sat 46 points higher at 346. When you look at the same stat head list I referenced earlier with all the players in the live ball era with at least 8,000 plate appearances, what stands out is the difference between his batting average and his on-base percentage. His 346 on on-base sits at the same level as guys with much lower batting averages. And Young didn't hit with enough power for the advanced metrics either. His 441 slugging percentage ranks 136th out of our 242, so he's right in the middle on this list, along with guys like Steve Finley, Mark Grace, and Derek Jeter. He did have three seasons with at least 20 home runs, so it's not like he didn't have any power, and he did hit 440 doubles in his career, which is a lot, but he just didn't hit with enough pop to really stand out from the average major leaguer in that regard. Now, what do the metrics say about his defense? On baseball reference, he has a defensive war of negative 10.5, his fielding runs is a negative 152, ouch, a negative 103 total zone fielding runs, and for the record, Young was a negative at all four positions he played in this stat, and a negative 155 defensive runs saved, again, negative at all four positions. And on fan graphs, they have him as a negative 90.7 fielding runs above average. So the advanced numbers on Young's defense are, well, brutal. They suggest that even though Young was good enough to play all four infield positions, he was well below average at each position. Now, having said all that, many have argued that these defensive metrics can sometimes not paint the whole picture. For example, Derek Jeter has the absolute worst fielding runs number of the live ball era, a negative 253. And yet many maintain that Jeter was actually a great defender. Listen, I didn't watch Michael Young play every day, so I'm not going to claim to be the expert on his case here. But if you just go by the metrics, you'd be led to believe Michael Young was a serious defensive liability. But the flip side to that would be the argument that Young played almost 800 games as a shortstop in the major leagues. Surely they wouldn't keep trotting him out to shortstop every day, year after year, if he truly was a horrendous defender. I think the truth probably lies somewhere in the middle here. He was solid enough to play most of his career at premium positions, but consistently rated below average for those premium positions pretty much the whole time, leading to some bad raw totals. So what about his base running? On fan graphs, his runs above average sit at a negative 15.9, and Baseball Reference has him at a plus 11 on base running runs. Young only stole 90 bags for his entire career, and his career high was 13. You'd certainly like to get better base stealing production from a guy who played 1,200 games as a middle infielder. For the most part, it looks like Michael Young didn't necessarily hurt you on the bases a whole lot, but he didn't add a lot of extra value either which again, for a middle infielder, is less than ideal. So, you put all these numbers together and you get to a 24.7 war for his entire career. Certainly a good career, nothing to be ashamed of, but not as high as a number you would expect from a guy with Young's reputation. Young's seven-year peak in war sits at 21.4. The average Hall of Fame shortstop sits at 43.2 war for their seven-year peak. So you can see the numbers value him at only about half the value of a Hall of Fame shortstop, even in his prime. And again, when comparing Young to league average instead of replacement level, his career wins above average sits at negative 4.6 wins. This suggests Michael Young may actually have been a below average major leaguer. So, with this large discrepancy between the traditional numbers and the advanced numbers, how should we evaluate Michael Young's career? It's not an easy task. And this is why I think Michael Young's career is so fascinating. Because I believe that in this case, both things can be true. I believe it's true that Michael Young's lack of walks, lack of power, lack of base running prowess, 
and lack of elite skills at any one particular position made him more or less average in a lot of ways. But I also believe Michael Young was well above average in many other ways that don't necessarily show up in these advanced numbers. Let's look at Michael Young's career from a few more angles before we come to a conclusion. First, let's look at some of his career splits. How about first half of the season versus second half? In the first half, Young hit 303 with a 794 OPS, and in the second half, he hit 297 with a 778. So Young was pretty much the same hitter before and after the break for his career. Now let's look at my favorite of Young's splits, his monthly SOPS Plus. SOPS Plus looks at the player's OPS relative to the league's OPS for that month. And a quick reminder, on these numbers, 100 is always league average. You can see here over a nine year stretch from 2003 to 2011, in these nine years, he only had six months with an SOPS Plus below 85, or more than 15% below league average. Many of Young's bad months consisted of an SOPS Plus somewhere around 70 to 75, which usually equated to an OPS of about 650 or 675. Obviously not a great month, but not terrible when you consider that these were his slumps. Most players' slumps look a lot worse than a 650 or 675 OPS. In these nine seasons, Young really only had two months that I would consider to be really, really bad. In August of 04, he posted a 579 OPS, and in March, April of 07, he posted a 582 OPS. And that's pretty much it. Over the course of nine full seasons, Michael Young really only slumped two times, and it only lasted a few weeks. Michael Young was an incredibly consistent hitter. His manager knew that if he put Young in the lineup every day, he was going to get production week in and week out. Next, let's look at Michael Young's clutch numbers. With men on base, he hit 315 with an 828 OPS. With runners in scoring position, he hit 321 with an 831 OPS. In late and close situations, 286 with a 724. And in high leverage situations, 307 with a 796. And when you compare these numbers to his career averages of 300 and 787, you see that in three out of these four clutch situations, Michael Young stepped up his game and actually performed better. The only situations where his numbers went down was the late and close category. Now, it should be noted that Young's career postseason numbers were not great. But at least in the regular season, Michael Young stepped up in the clutch moments. A third angle to look at Young's career from is the fact that he was a utility player. Young started 776 games at shortstop, the most of any position, but he also started 457 games at third, 433 at second, and 98 games at first base. Again, the metrics aren't kind to Young defensively, as he's rated well below average at all four positions, but below league average doesn't necessarily mean you're bad. You can still be a solid major leaguer without being in the top 15 of the league. Young could hold his own at all four positions, he just wasn't necessarily ideal. And I think there's at least something to be said for being able to play all four infield positions competently. Do you want to guess how many players in the live ball era have appeared in at least 100 games at all four infield positions? 10. Just 10. Here's the list. And the fourth and final angle I want to look at Young's career from is his remarkable ability to stay on the field. Here are Michael Young's games played over a 12-year stretch from 2002 to 2013. You can see that over the course of these 12 seasons, he averaged 155 games played. The only year he missed significant time was in 2009 when he battled a left hamstring injury. And even in 2008, when he had a lingering finger injury, he played through it. How many players in the live ball era have appeared in at least 155 games in 10 or more seasons, you ask? Just 15. Sure, it's true that if every MLB player could manage to stay healthy enough to average over 700 plate appearances for 14 years, like Young did, the average major leaguer could probably give you similar run production as Michael Young did. But the bottom line is that most guys can't and don't do that. Most guys either get injured once or twice a year, 
or they are streaky hitters who have to ride the pine for a while until they heat up again. Or maybe they just see a steady dip in production and find themselves out of a major league job after a handful of years. But not Michael Young. He was productive enough, consistent enough, and healthy enough to stay on the field pretty much every day for 14 years. So when you put all this together, you realize that there's just something special about a player like Michael Young that you can't quite put your finger on. As a former coach, I can tell you that a player like Michael Young is a coach's dream. A guy who can play every infield position, never really goes into a slump, gets better in clutch situations, and stays extremely healthy, give me a guy like that any day. He gives his manager a lot of options and a lot less stress over the course of a long 162 game season. Or perhaps another way to describe Michael Young is this. He was a guy with a very high floor. Although his ceiling wasn't super high in that he was never going to hit 30 home runs, steal 30 bases, or really wow you with anything in particular, you pretty much knew the bare minimum of what you were going to get from Michael Young year in and year out, which was consistent production. Listen, I'm a big fan of advanced analytics. However, advanced numbers never truly tell the whole story. If you simply look at the sabermetrics, you risk missing the bigger picture for a player like Michael Young, who brings a lot of value to your team in a lot of different ways that other guys just can't replicate. And no matter how you feel about his advanced numbers, the bottom line is this. Michael Young won a batting title. Michael Young led his league in hits twice. And he drove in over a thousand runs. If you take Michael Young's career numbers and even round them down a bit, Young is one of only 28 players in all of history to accumulate those numbers. Michael Young was curiously both below average and yet somehow one of the most versatile and productive players of all time. 